looking at Leviticus chapter 19. And uh, before we get started, I think um, what we want to do, because the beauty of Leviticus is that we get to understand and to see the nature of the law as revealed to us as human beings by God through Moses. Understanding that Jesus said all scripture was written about him. And keeping in mind that though the law was to bring forth the nature and show the character of the holiness of God, which is why there were certain things that you couldn't do that would bring ceremonially unholiness to your nature, which would then be a separation between you and God, which is what sin does. Sin separates uh, us from our Lord. But as we go through this, we're not going through it to say, when you read these laws, that these are the laws you have to do in order to be saved. These are principles that you should do just to be a good person or to, to live right. And some of them don't even apply to this day, which we will point out as we go through. But the key is to keep in mind, our, 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 the law was written as a, uh, a blueprint that would be fulfilled in its entirely and be fulfilled completely by Jesus. And we always have to keep that in mind. And so just as a way of reflecting on that, I think it's important as we go through the law that every now and then we go back to the New Testament and just show forth some of the things that speak to that. And we've done that several times before using uh, different verses, and we're going to do this again. Now, so uh, I'm going to turn to uh, Galatians chapter 2. I'm just going to read one verse. And uh, just to kind of give us that understanding. Uh, and of course, this is Paul speaking by the Spirit of God. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. And it says, um, actually, let me read, this. Let me read uh, 15 as well, 15 and 16. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the, of the Gentiles, Verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Okay, that's important to keep in mind. But by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Jesus and not by the works of the law. For by the works of of the law shall no flesh be justified. So I think it's important as we go through the law that we don't go through it with the mindset, oh, I got to start doing this. It's a principle, and you'll see some things in there that you will say, well, yeah, I want to do that, but I'm not doing it to get salvation. I'm doing it because it's just right to do. All right. Let me read one more verse just to kind of have uh, that two or three witnessing thing. So we're going to go to Romans. Uh, chapter 3, and we're going to read two verses. We're going to read verses 20, then we're going to skip down, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about why we're going to skip down in just a bit, uh, and then read the 31st verse. So Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Romans chapter 3, verse 20, and it says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, that's how we know we are a sinner. Right? Then this whole chapter goes through a, a, a major lesson about what it is and how we're not teaching this, but I just wanted to bring that out. But let's skip down and go down to verse 31. And it says, uh, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So, I think it's also important that the law is not worthless. The scripture says, do we therefore make the law void? Do we just say, well, it doesn't matter? 
No, it does matter because it matters because that was what Jesus utilized to bring forth our salvation because he was the fulfillment of the law. If there was no one to fulfill the law of Moses, then we could not get sin paid for. That was the contract that had to be fulfilled. We can't do it. We weren't able to do it. And the Israelites that received the law were not able to do it. And therefore, it looks as though, well, how can anyone then be saved? Well, thank God for Jesus. All right, because he came and fulfilled it. So, now, with that being said, let's go back to Leviticus chapter 19. And let's take a listen to our reading. Leviticus chapter 19. Let's take a listen. Chapter 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer it as your own will. It shall be eaten the same day ye offer it, and on the morrow. And if aught remain until the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable. It shall not be accepted. Therefore, every one that eateth it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned the hallowed thing of the Lord. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. For thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear thy God. I am the Lord. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tale-bearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed, neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman, that is a bondmaid, betrothed to an husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, she shall be scourged. They shall not be put to death, because she was not free. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram for a trespass offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin which he hath done. And the sin which he hath done shall be forgiven him. And when ye shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you, it shall not be eaten up. But in the fourth year all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord withal. In the fifth year shall ye eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment, nor observe times. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute thy daughter, to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths, and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. 
Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, and honor the face of the old man, and fear thy God. I am the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, in meat yard, in weight, or in measure. Just balances, just weights, and just ephah, and a just hin shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them. I am the Lord. Alright, here we go. So, once again, the beauty of this is the comparison that we're going to see in this chapter is how this chapter opens up and how the Lord describes himself. And then we're going to see a, a, a nature and a prescription of, of, of focus we should have about mixing unholy with holy. That's really the foundation of this chapter. Putting uh, unholy philosophy mingled it with the things of God, which people will always try to do, which is why we have these warnings. But we'll see that is a, uh, a common thread that runs through all of the things that we see here uh, in dealing with the holiness of God and our ability to be what God said, I am holy, therefore be ye holy. Well, we're going to discuss that because once again, can I be holy in myself? No. Then how do I achieve it? I have to want it. I have to desire it. But I can't accomplish it. That's why we trust in Jesus. Because he then gives unto us. He imputes the righteousness that we should have, that we can't have, to us. It's important to keep in mind. So look how this opens. So it says, and the Lord. And we talk about that. When it says the Lord, are you going to call the Lord, Lord, then that means you're looking to do what he says. If you're not looking to do what God says, you can stop here because it says the Lord. And if he's not your Lord, then what is he? Your suggester, a person that gives you uh, 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 some suggestions to do? Or is he Lord that's, that I'm trying to learn how to follow his lead? It's important if you're going to call God Lord. Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? So, if we go any further here, we accept this opening statement, and the Lord, then we can move forward. But if he's not Lord, then the rest of this don't matter. So, it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses. He spoke unto to the individual to whom he is giving these instructions. This is why this is oftentimes called the law of Moses. Okay? And then he says, say, look at verse 2 speak unto all the congregation. So he gave it to Moses. It's the law of Moses. But Moses was instructed, give this to everybody. Tell everybody about this. Let everyone know. And here we are now, you know, centuries later, reading it again ourselves. All right? Letting people know about it. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, the chosen people. This is what was going to be utilized for them and by this and through them Jesus was going to come the law was given, Jesus was born Jesus fulfilled the law that's why we have redemption so he's speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them ye shall be holy for I the Lord your God am holy that's it right there that's what we are trying to accomplish we have to take on and have the nature of God. And this is what this chapter here is saying. How do you be how, how do you become holy? How are you going to be a holy person and a holy uh, a being? Well, you got to do all this mosaic law. You got to do it all. And if you could do it all, which you can't do, you could stand before God and say, okay, I've done it all. Remember when the, uh, uh, the rich man came to Jesus and said, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus told him, well, how readest thou? You know, what's, what, you know, how did you interpret the word? And he said that you should love your neighbor as yourself and you should, you know, do good. And, you know, he recited all this stuff. 
And then uh, the man said, all of this I have done from my youth up. He was thinking that he had been able to fulfill the law of Moses. Well, Jesus knew he couldn't do it. That's why Jesus came, because he's the only one that could do it. So in order to prove to him that he couldn't do it, he said, fine. He didn't argue with the guy. He didn't call the guy a liar, because he knew that his mind was caught up in religiosity, thinking that he could do certain things to bring him to this state. Be ye holy, for because our God is holy. What Jesus did was, fine, tell you what you do. You want to be perfect? Go take everything you got, sell it, give it to the poor, and then follow me. Now, Jesus knew he was not going to do that because he is not holy like God. He's going to need redemption just like you and me. And so the, the, uh, the story says that when the man heard that, he walked away sad. Why? Because he wasn't going to do that. So what did that mean? He didn't love his neighbor as he loved himself. Because if he loved his neighbor, he'd be like, I'd rather, I, I wouldn't mind whether I got the riches or my neighbor has the riches. It don't really matter to me. If I give it to my neighbor, it's just like I have it. If I have it, it's just like my neighbor has it. He didn't have that. And so we can all find little things that we may be somewhat more consistent at in doing. But God can find those things that we are very inconsistent at doing. Therefore, this whole statement here, uh, uh, say unto them, uh, ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy, is a problem if you don't accept Jesus. So when we went into Galatians and we went into Romans, it told us no flesh can be justified by the law. Why? Because we can't keep it. So then how are we justified? How do we become holy? Through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's how we go. But we keep going. All of these things here we're going to look at as, as items that will show forth some of the things that we just can't seem to juggle and balance right. And it's going to give a laundry list of, of items and things that are to be done. So in verse 3, it says, Ye shall fear every man his mother and father. Well, we got problems right off the bat. <laughs> all right? Because some people got all kinds of issues with parents, and, and that's just the way it is. And, and, and you, you're not going to be able to change that. Some parents are great, and some parents are problems. All right? And so you're always going to have that, that little issue where you've got that going on. But that's what's supposed to happen. That's the way it's supposed to be. And so, therefore, God's telling the children of Israel that this is a statute for you. That, that you should uh, uh, look at your father and mother with honor and with reverence and with pride. All right? And then it says, and keep my Sabbath. So that means that you're going to recognize that on the Sabbath days that you're not going to do any work. All right? And for the children of Israel, it was a, um, an actual day of, of ceremonial rest that they were supposed to do. We went through that whole concept about the Sabbath day before, and I, I'll mention just a brief piece about it again. That Sabbath day speaks of rest, which speaks of the rest that Jesus uh, provides us, so we don't have to work. So when we look at the original Sabbath day, we saw that God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then on the seventh day, he did what? He, he rested. He stopped working. Our Sabbath day means I stop working for what? Redemption. I stop working trying to be saved. What, so what do you mean? I rest all of my salvation, all of my uh, uh, redemption in Jesus. And then I'm done. I don't have to work for it anymore. Jesus is the fulfillment of my Sabbath day. So if I don't rest in the Sabbath day, I got a problem. Because I'm supposed to be resting in Jesus. If I'm trying to do work when Jesus is my Sabbath, I'm going to be cut off. And you're going to see all through Scripture, because Jesus is the type of that fulfillment of the Sabbath, when, people's do, when people do work in the Sabbath day, when we go through the law of Moses here, there's severe penalties. Because they're trying to do work when they should be resting. Which speaks to us today when you're trying to add to what Jesus already provided. So 
when you've got something that's, that's pure, when you add anything else to it, what does it make it? Impure. Jesus' salvation is perfect. You can't work to add anything to it. The Lord's redemption does not need your or my two cents. We just need to accept it, believe that it's complete, and, and, and go by faith. So therefore, the Sabbath we're going to see uh, is important. He said, so you've got to honor your mother and your father, and you're going to, keep, you're going to uh, uh, honor the Sabbath. All of those represents the nature of how we should be. The mother and father is also, I kind of skipped over that a little bit, but it also represents the understanding that we have a heavenly father. And so we ought to reverence and, and, uh, and see him in leadership and in direction. All right? But it goes on. There's a lot to this. Verse 4. Uh, Turn ye not uh, unto idols, nor make to yourselves any molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So, don't try to find things that you might see as convenient things to worship. Because it looks good. And that's what it is with an idol. Something that I can look at. Something tangible. That I don't have to keep having this kind of intangible and, 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 and un, uh, 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 material thing called faith. Can I just have some substance? Can I have something that I can hold? And people are like that. They want something they can just take and put in their pocket. Right? And so they got, back in the day, they would make all kinds of idols. We do the same thing today. We want to put our trust, instead of in molten images, we want to put our things, our trust in things like you know, our 401k or our bank account or our, 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 our medical plan, or, or you know, our, our family status, um, you know, and so many other things that we can try to put forth when God says, don't make any of these things idols. Seek God. God is the one that we should look to uh, as um, the answer to all of our issues. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In some of the ways, no. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct that path. So, so, so there's nothing too small and there's nothing too big. All right? They, uh, the God can handle. Sometimes we think, well, some of the small stuff I'll, I'll try to handle myself, but I'll give the big things to God. Well, when you give something big to you think to God, let me ask you the question. What kind of problem do you got that's big to God? <laughs> so, nothing. So it may be Un unthinkable how you could solve it in your mind, but to God it's, it's just no big deal. You know, it's, 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 it's a simple issue. So all things to God are simple. To us, they may have degrees, but to God they're all no big deal. Verse 5. And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord, ye shall offer it uh, at your own will. Now, what is this saying? This speaks to it. The children of Israel said, any, if you offer a peace offering, that's the offering that you, we went through before, that speaks to the relationship or the communion that we have with God. So if you're going to have an offering, if you're going to offer a peace offering, in other words, if you're going to give your, your uh, 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 connection and your relationship to God, you got to make sure you do it one particular way. And that is, of your own free will. Don't do it because somebody is tying your hand behind your back or forcing you or trying to make things difficult for you. Whatever you do, make sure you do it of your own Chapter free six. will. Oh. Hello, Mary. We are in uh, Leviticus um, uh, chapter 19, and right now we're on, we're on verse 5. Chapter 19, verse 5. Yeah. All right. So I think it's important that we recognize that when we are doing and serving God, we do it because we want to. We do it because I see the, 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 the goodness of following Jesus. I see the goodness and the proper aspect of allowing him to be Lord of my life. And if you're not doing it of your own free will, then it's a waste of time. You got to want it. Right? You got to want it. Um, this one of the things that I, I find that's so remarkable about uh, remarkable about David. David said, "Oh, that I might know him." 
speaking of that I might know the Lord. You know, and so it's not that I can get something from him. Because a lot of times you got we gotta make sure we make the, the distinction. Do you want to get to know God because I want God to give me things? I want God to give me money and health and and, and wisdom and knowledge and and and, and, and uh, favor. Is that what we are uh, building a relationship with God for? Or do I just want to know the God of the universe? Lord, help me to know you. Can I come and just get to understand who you are? Because if I, if I know you, I don't have to worry about all that other stuff. That's, that's irrelevant because if I know who you are, I know you provide all that. But I just want to understand who you are, get to know your nature. All right? And that's, that's how you build intimacy. See, when you look at a husband and a wife when they get married, if the husband or the wife say, I want to marry you, but I only want you for what I can get out of you, I don't really want to know you. I don't want to know what makes you happy. I don't want to know what makes you cry. I don't want to know what puts, you know, what, what any desires you have. I don't want to know what your favorite food is. I don't want to know what your favorite color is. I don't want to know any of that stuff. I just want you to do the things that make me feel good, make me happy when I'm around you. That's all I want. Well, that's a horrible relationship, right? So, similar to God, are we trying to get to know him? Do we want to have that, that, that intimate relationship with the Lord where, where he can show us who he is? Because that's what he wants to do. That's why he wrote this word. That's why he gave us the, 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 the scriptures. And if we will just sit and just go through it, can you imagine if somebody that... that that really loved and cared for you wrote you an email or sent you a long text and you looked at it and you're like yeah I'm not going to read this I'll read it when I get ready or when I get time and then sometimes when you read it you kind of just skip through it you don't read the whole thing well this is God's text message to us the word of God and oftentimes we just look at this as being like whatever when God has put so much in here throughout centuries to just communicate to us himself. And if we don't want to get to know that, well, then the question would be why? He's poured out his, his being to us through his scripture to the point where Jesus says, if you, uh, if you want to get uh, uh, to know the word, you're going to get to know me because it was written about me. And so, therefore, I find great satisfaction in going through the Word because what I'm doing is I'm getting to know, like David said, oh, that I might know him. I want to know him. All right? So when you offer stuff, it's got to be of your own free will. Look at verse 6. Ye shall, I'm saying, it shall be eaten the same day uh, ye offer it. Now, here's an important thing. When you do your sacrifice, the law of the, uh, of the sacrifice was that you're supposed to sacrifice it and continue the process. You sacrifice, you eat it, and then you, and if it took a little bit more to finish up the meal the next day, then you would eat it. But you don't want it, have it sticking around until the third day. All right? Uh, and there's a lot we can say about that third day, because that third day is when things change. Because remember, the third day when, after Jesus' death, that's when he what, rose again. So, um, but uh, you're supposed to, to eat it. And it's important to recognize one of the statements that Scripture says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So sometimes we're going to say, well, I'm going to hear God's voice, and I hear it, and I agree with it, but I'm going to receive it tomorrow, or I'll receive it the third day. And what the Lord is saying is, after the prescribed time, that day of the sacrifice or the next day, you should have eaten it. If you didn't, if you eat it after that, there's a problem. Same thing with when God speaks to our hearts, when he's trying to get us to do things. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. Sometimes God will put something on your heart and you'll just be like, okay, whatever. And, you, and then you'll think back maybe a week later, you're like, you know what, the Lord put something on my heart the other day. And for some reason or another, I just can't remember it or I just, it just doesn't seem as important. Of course not. It's not important anymore because it's done, because God removed it. We're going to see that when we get to the story in our next chapter, in our next book, uh, Numbers, when we look at a prophet named Balaam. 
God's going to tell, ba tell Balaam something. Then Balaam's going to look at it, wait two or three days, and then go back and ask God to, you know, about it again. And God's going to be like, well, what I had told you that first day was what you should have done. Now, you can do it any way you want to. And we're going to see what happens to him because of that. All right? So it continues on, and it says that, um, and if ought remain until the third day, it shall be burnt in fire. So if, you, if it's there at, on the third day, you should burn it. Look at verse 7. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable. It shall not be accepted. All right? So, God tells you to do something, and you're just waiting around. You know what? And he, I'll come when I get ready. It's not going to be accepted. Remember, you are chosen. God is calling you. All right? And so when he calls you, you know, you should respond. If you don't respond, then you're gonna have, you might have to wait for a new call. All right, it's kind of like that when uh, you get on a getting ready to get on a plane, and sometimes when that plane gets ready to take off, and they know you're supposed to be there, they call your name, and if you don't get there in time, or well, the plane takes off, well, I want to still get to where I'm going. Well, you're gonna have to wait for the next plane now. So it's similar to to that. Is it, you know, just trying to draw an analogy. God oftentimes wants us to do what He wants us to do when He tells us to do it, and sometimes we think we can do it whenever we get ready. We got to give that reverence and the respect to God. That goes back to the opening part. That's how we why we see Him as a as a as a heavenly Father, as a parent aspect. You know that you're supposed to uh, 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 obey and see that has understanding and leadership. All right, all right. So uh, in verse eight it says, "Therefore, everyone that eateth it shall bear his iniquity." All right, that's a problem. You don't want to bear your iniquity. I want my iniquity to be what? Forgiven. I want, I want it to be cleansed. I want to be thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. I want the forgiveness of God. But I only get that by accepting Jesus. All right? But if you do it your way, then you're going to bear the iniquity because he have profaned the hollow thing. That means you're no longer holy. You're not working in the ways of God. He has profaned the hollow thing of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. You no longer have proper relationship. Right? So that speaks to, to our connection to God and doing the things of God when and the way he tells us to do them. So many times we're going to see people that are spiritual. We're going to see this in a minute too. But they're just trying to do things their own way and not the ways of God. But uh, that don't mean just because you're spiritual and you're saying spiritual things that you are following God. All right, well, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, now here's some other things here that we're going to see that are pretty common, but I think are important. Verse 9. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of the field, neither shall thou gather uh, the gleanings of the harvest. Look at verse 10. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape uh, uh, of, of the vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. Now look at this. It talks about when you are blessed. If you got a vineyard, you're blessed. You got something. All right? Now when you have your vineyard, don't look and try to say, I'm squeezing every dime out of this thing. I'm not leaving nothing for nobody. I'm not trying to find out how I can take my blessing and have somebody else benefit from all my hard work. I planted the vineyard. I, you know, did the nurturing and the watering and all that. And when the grapes come out, every grape that come out is mine. Well, you got a problem. Because what you're not doing is acknowledging God. Sure, you may have tilled the land. Maybe you did plant the grapes. But where did the dirt come from? Did you make it? All right. The dirt came from the earth, which God made. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Plants need sunlight. Oh, you went and got your own sun and put the light on it? Plants need water. And all the chemical compound, compounds that, that make plants grow. And the whole uh, 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 
ecosystem behind why plants do what they do. Did you put that law in place? No, God did. So when you have a blessing like this, you still have to acknowledge, I'm just a steward of the goodness of God and can be agreeable to be, I want to take what I got and just you know, be uh, good with it, but I don't mind sharing it with somebody else. Matter of fact, I want to share it with somebody. I want to be able to help other people because of what God has blessed me with. I want my blessing to be a blessing to others. That's the mindset. That's the principle. Now, this was the actual law that you had to do, but I'm pulling out the principle. The thinking that we should have is, I got things that I'm good at that God has blessed me with, and I got to make sure I'm allowing that to be a blessing to other people. I can't keep it to myself. Find out what that is. What's your vineyard? What's your grape that God has, has prospered in your life? that you need to make sure that you're sharing with other people. All right, verse 11. Ye shall not steal. Okay, that's obvious. All right. Uh, you know, before I go back to verse 11, let me go back to verse 10. Uh, let me just point out um, the poor and the stranger. All right, I want to point that out because a, a lot of times that seems to be kind of overlooked. But I want you to just make note, underline, how many times the scripture talks to us about helping and assisting those less fortunate than yourself. So I just want to make sure I, I highlight that, the poor and the stranger. The person that's in a, a place where he doesn't feel comfortable, he doesn't feel at home, and the person that just doesn't have what you have, the poor and the stranger. All right, We're going to keep that in the back of our minds, not just for today, but as we go through the remainder of the scripture. Make sure we just pay attention to that. Verse 11 again. Ye shall not steal, all right? Neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. So, I mean, that's all devilish stuff right there. That's very obvious. That's a principle that we should keep in mind. The devil is, a, is, a, is the one that steals. For the scripture says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil is a liar. Jesus said he was a, he's a liar and the father of it. That's just devilish stuff here which we're going, we're going to see, we're going to get into here in just a minute. These are some cruel individuals now. You're going to steal? See, the person that gleaned his, his, his land, he's selfish. This person is evil because I'm going to go steal from somebody else. I don't have, and now I'm going to go steal. And I'm going to lie about it. I'm going to deal falsely. Look at verse 12. Ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name uh, of thy God. I am the Lord. So you're going to swear by God? You're going to say, oh, by, you know, you're going to use God as a means of saying, I'm going to take his name and use it to get gain. Which a lot of people do. They will paint Christian and Jesus on something and just try to get people's attention. But their whole real focus is I want what you got. And so I'm going to use the name of God to do what? I'm going to go from verse 12 and try to use it what's in verse 11. I'm going to use the name of God to do what? To steal. And I'm going to be false. Paul talked about this. He said that there will be wolves in what? Sheep's clothing. So they're going to come out trying to be spiritual, but are not. They're, they're, they, they work in a spirit, but not the spirit of God. They work in the spirit of the enemy, the spirit of the devil, which we're going to see some more uh, as we keep going. I have here. a question. I have an answer about that. You, you always say wolves and sheep clothing, or they just um, wolf, um the wolves that's in a uh, truck that are um, sheep clothing, or just wolves that that's out to just to destroy the, the nation. Well, it's all of that. It's it's, it's all okay. that. So so you got. You got some uh, some clans and some and some some organizations that say they are spiritual, but that whole organization is about their own selves and their own. Ku Klux Klan. Like like the Ku Klux Klan, Penny said. Yes, you know. And so there's a lot of different organizations. Well, I got I got chased by uh, um, something that belonged that belonged to Satan. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't and. 
I give it five years in Beacon. I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to go to jail, so I had to offend myself. And you always say walls and sheep clothing. I did. I did. I did see that. If nobody didn't don't see my miracle, God bless. But I did. All right. So I didn't want to go to jail for for a tribe that I didn't want to um, kill. I wanted to go and give it to God. Right. Well, the thing about it is that, uh, you know, there are a lot of things out there that will fall into this. And there are cults and different things that are very obvious. But then there are some that are very uh, 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 hard to detect. And that's why we got to walk by the Spirit of God. Uh, yeah. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And so that's what you got to do. You got to listen to the Lord. And he will not allow you to uh, be snared. And when you get when you get out where you're not supposed to be the one thing you can count on is that the Lord said he will leave the 99 and go find that one lost sheep so if you belong to the Lord he will come get you if you get into something that you're not supposed to be in look at verse 13 he says ye shall not defraud thy neighbor neither rob him uh, the wages of him that is hired shall not uh, abide with thee all night until the morning so important stuff here all right so now when you got authority and power and you got blessings all right you got your neighbor i'm going to defraud him in other words i'm not going to do what is right by him i am an employer and i have an employee and i'm supposed to pay him wages well i am not going to pay him today i'll pay him when i get ready that's the problem when somebody does something you're supposed to give them their just due and you'll see that that happens a lot. There's some things that people do, uh, and you never give them the, the just do. Sometimes you owe people not money, but you owe them a thank you. You owe them a, a, an apology. You owe them a, 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 I'm sorry. And if you owe them that, you should give it to them. Well, I, I'll apologize tomorrow. No. You owe it to them today. Give it to them. And then other things that, you know, you can just sit and look at this. This has no boundaries that I can paint and show you all and exhaust all the possibilities. But life itself brings to us situations in which um, there is a proper uh, 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 reciprocation that's supposed to happen. And if you don't do it, you owe it still. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. Sometimes you just owe somebody just a smile. You know, and sometimes you have to recognize, you know, what it is that you do. If you are a joyful person and you can smile and, and, and have joy in the midst of all kinds of issues, you and, and the Lord has given that to you, uh, the Lord is expecting you to do that, to show the joy, to show the peace, to show the comfort in times of trouble so that you can do what? Bless other people, right? And so, but a lot of times we're trying to rob folks and, and, and hold back. Don't hold back what God has given you. Yeah, you know, that, that's great because I'm looking at this from like yesterday. But let's start on Friday. Friday had a little problem with one of the neighbors here. You know, I came up to So she comes and she does like this. She picks through the door. I tell her, knock on my door, stop peeking through my screen. She said, why? I said, because I was peeping time. <laughs> you're in there looking in my house. You know, you're in there looking in my house. You're not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to knock on the door. So my sister Barbara would sit there. I said, Barbara, I'm getting to the point that you're doing it again. I'm going to something now. <laughs> Barbara said, don't do that. You know, I started to tell her again. Yeah. Saturday comes. He does it again. Then she knocks on the door. So I said, come in. I said, I told you yesterday, stop peeking through my door. I said, a little rougher than that. Mm -hmm. I said, now the next time, my sister don't want me to do nothing that. I said, the next time, I'm going to call the office and tell them what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I know you want some name. <laughs> so she needed a ride to work. Right. Now, my sister's working for me. So I tell my sister Barbara, I said, Barbara, do it for 
This big room is just sitting down. She said, why are you been asking me? Because you're really starting to hurt me. You know? Mm. So my sister Barbara said, ah. I said, well, just, just take it. Just take it. So she going to tell me, you can't tell nobody to do what they have to do with their car. I said, she can't know that you're right. I said, but my sister works for me. I can probably just sit back down, too. You can't take nobody to work. You're working for me. You're supposed to be here to take care of me. I take care of work. You know? Yeah. So Barbara looked at me and said, well, what do you want me to do? I said, sit back down. I just sit back down. I said, she took a job. She said, I have a way to get to work. I told her, so now can you please leave my house? <laughs> he got me and cursed me out. I told her, I said, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. But I was trying to be nice to help you. Then you got to start all this. I said, no, my sister has to work for me. I need a haircut and a shower. So that's more important than her taking you. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you're going to always okay. have... You're going to always have that, you know, and it talks about, you see, it said talked about the neighbor, right? So, right. you know, how do we deal with that when, we, when you having, you know, the neighbor? And uh, it's something that you have to look at uh, as an individual basis. Uh, like I said, there are no clear-cut boundaries on how to handle things. So sometimes you do need to tell people to leave. And other times you need to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to make an, an exception and help you out or whatever the case may be. But all of that is important to know that you are dealing with realities and can I let my Christ nature show forth? All right. right. You see, that's why, just like what Mary said, see, it, it doesn't have to be a tribe. It doesn't have to be a bunch of people. It doesn't be one person, one person who wants something from you or someone close to you. Yeah. You know, she doesn't care about if my sister takes her to work and I get stuck in the house, I spill something. I mean, all, all she wants to do is get to work. She's trying to satisfy you know, her own need, yeah. Yes, you know. And I mean, like I said, it just gets to the point where I like living out here. I'm not going to move. But I keep telling people, you are also treacherous people. <laughs> you know, you speak. I noticed you speak to me when you want something from me. Right. Well, that's how that works. I mean, you're going to see that no matter where you go. Right. And, and um, you know, but the key is that you just got to make sure that you are looking at what it is God has blessed you with and what you can do and what you should do. But the thing is, you got to be real. And that's why we look at the, these situations and recognize nobody's going to do it perfectly. Nobody's going to do it all right. But you got to be real. Because if you, it, it's no need in trying to say, well, I'm going to do something because I just want to do it so that I can be told uh, I did it right. No, I want to do it from my heart. Right. I want to do what's because, right from, from within me. Because you want to do it. Right. You know, just like you read earlier, it's because, you know, you want to do it. You're because not you're doing up. it because someone else tells you. Exactly. It's got to be of your, yeah. own, your own free will. Right. You know, now, it's funny because right now I'm starting to think And the more we read on Sundays, I say, man, I can't wait till I finish reading my Bible so I can start again because now I know, what I'm, now I know what's going on. Right, right. Yep, you're gonna you know, enjoy it going, going, especially going through it the second time. Yes, yes, that's why. That's what I'm saying. But I still can't rush through my last few chapters. No, either. take your time. But I start, I started reading too much. No. And by me reading too much, I lost sight of what I was reading. Right. You take your time. So now we read like a, now we read like a chapter a day. Now things start to sink in. Good, good. You no, know? but yeah. All right, let's look at verse 14 here. It says, thou shalt not curse the deaf. And look at that. And you say, now, who will curse a deaf person? There's a lot of people that will look at a person that's handicapped and still misuse them. Uh, Nor put a stumbling block before the blind. Who would do that? People. They don't care about whether you've got mishaps or problems or different things. They're going to try to come in and take advantage. They will steal from the, from the blind and they will uh, uh, whisper... Uh, uh, dirt around the deaf. Why? Because they, 
there are people that are like that. And so what the Lord is saying, don't, don't have that. So what does that speak to us? How does that apply to us? Our nature should be we look at people to whom they have difficulties and things that, that uh, uh, can be taken advantage of and make sure we are not ones to take advantage of people that are vulnerable. There are a lot of vulnerable people in the world, and we got to make sure that we're showing them the goodness of the Lord. Uh, look at verse 15. You shall not uh, do unrighteousness in judgment. Okay, When you're doing proper things, judge properly. Thou shalt not uh, respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. So when you're doing truth, it doesn't matter whether you're going to tell the truth to a, a, a poor person or you dealing with truth to somebody that's rich or mighty. Truth, truth is worth giving to everybody. Right? And that's important to keep in mind. But your righteousness shall be judged by, uh, by thy neighbor. So you're going to do right regardless. 16. Thou shalt not go uh, up and down as a talebearer. I'm going to go tell it all. <laughs> Gossip. Man, that's a problem. I, I I can't wait to do. You know, it's like that old story about the you know the the three the three men, the three preachers that got together and said, hey, let's 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 share and tell each other each other our problem. And one guy said, man, I'm a I'm a drunk. I can't help it. I just get drunk and you know I go out of town and I get drunk. And that's my that's my problem. And the other preacher said, well, my problem is I I can't stop you know messing with the ladies. Like I just every time I turn around, I just I go out of town and I, I find one and I mess with them and then I come back to town. And then the third one says, well, my problem, I'm a gossip. And I can't wait to leave here so I can tell everybody <laughs> what y'all just told me. <laughs> so you have to be careful of, you know, that gossip person, man. <laughs> that gossip person is a problem. All right? So you, you got to be Make sure that you, you don't become that kind of person. And that's hard to be around a person like that. All right? Uh, Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. All right? So um, you, if, when you need to do something that's right or show the protection, somebody's accusing somebody of something, and you know the answer. He did not do it. You shouldn't just walk away and be like, well, I'm not going to say anything. No. Stand up for what's true. All right? Uh, 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. And I like the way it points out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother where? In thy heart. Because a lot of people can smile in your face. What's in your heart? Right? So thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt uh, in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. In other words, if you can give a rebuke or instruction to your neighbor to help him avoid sin, you should do that. You should not be like, well, listen, I know I should tell them about this, but you know what? I'm going to let them sin. I'm, I'm going to let them do what they want to do. You got to be careful. Tell them the truth. Now, if you told them and they still, then at least you can say, I did say it. I did give you the warning. But don't withhold it. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Sometimes we think that, that, that love thy neighbor as yourself only is in the New Testament. Well, here it is right here. And this is what Jesus was able to do. And this is the one that Jesus pulled out with that rich man that thought he he said, all these things I've done from my youth up. Jesus went and grabbed this particular verse here and said, okay, go sell everything you got and give it to, your, give it to, your, 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 uh, to the poor and follow me. He couldn't do it. But what if your neighbors just treacherous? You, you still love them. But see, here's the thing. If you, if you can love your neighbor and still recognize that I have to do certain things with them. Okay? See, now, suppose, I'm, I'm going to give an, an extreme example. Suppose you've got a neighbor that no matter what you tell them, they refuse to take a bath or a shower. Well, they're going to be funky, right? They're going to stink. 
You can love them, but that don't mean you can come in my house because I don't want that smell in my carpet or my, yard, in my, my, my couch and everything. I'm, when we meet, I care for you and I help you, but we're going to meet outside. Okay. So what does that mean? I make adjustments. I don't not love you. I just know you got problems, and whatever problem you got, I got to find ways to make adjustments so I can still care for you. Now, here's another thing. Sometimes the adjustment means right now I don't need to see you. Okay. See, I can love you, but I don't. I, I need to love you from a distance because right now I don't need to see you because if I see you, you're going to say something that's going to get me frustrated. So okay. in order for me to love you as I love myself, I don't need to see you. Just sometimes you can look at yourself and be like, you know what, I, I, I don't even like myself because I just did something or said something or whatever. Yeah. And, and sometimes you're just trying to get, you know, I got to, I mean, let me just go take a nap because you're tired of your own brain and your own thinking. Well, sometimes you got to separate yourself from certain people. And it's not because I don't like you or don't love you. It's because when I'm around you, you bring out the, the worst in me. And therefore, that's not going to be a good thing for you or me. And sometimes you can separate in love. It's important to recognize that. Verse 19. Ye shall keep my, my statutes uh, that uh, thou shalt not let uh, cattle uh, gender with diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingle uh, of linen and woolen come together. Now, what is this saying? The nature and the principle of here is don't put strange things together. In other words, you can't, Jesus says, you can't serve God and what? And man. You're trying to put them together, it's not going to work. The concept here is don't take one kind of animal, a, a, a donkey, and try to mingle it with a cow and try to get some kind of you know, hybrid animal. That's not proper. And it says, even with the seed, don't be sowing mingled seed together because it can disrupt the, um, the, the, uh, 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 the nutrients of the soil. There's certain ways you're supposed to plant the soil. And even in a standpoint, a, a standpoint of garment, you take a linen garment and a wool garment and you sew it together, well, it may work good until you do what? Until you wash it. Because the linen is going to hold straight and the wool is going to do what? Shrink. So the minute you put anything on it to wash it, it's going to show that it's different. And it's just like anything else. You wash anything. Uh, once the blood of the Lord washes us, that's what happens to the people that are mingled with unholy people. You got, you know, uh, 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 spiritually evil people trying to mingle with spiritual people. Once the Spirit of God washes us, we begin to see who it is. Jesus told us about that when he said that while men slept, the, the devil came in and sowed tares amongst the wheat. And they said, well, shall we come and take them out? He said, no, let the tares and the wheat do what? Grow together. But in the right time, God's going to come and he's going to send his angels and they're going to reap and he's going to remove the wheat and burn up the tares. So it's important for us to keep that in mind. All right. Um, I'm going to try to finish up here. Uh, if y'all give me an extra seven minutes, we'll finish it up. All right. Verse 7, I mean, verse um, 20. Whosoever lieth carnally with a woman, that is a bond. So here's another mixture. A, a person of a, a, a free lying with their bond or their slave woman. Well, did that happen anywhere in the world? <laughs> of course it did. It happened right here in the good old America, right? Down uh, through our history. That's part of our history. All right? But God knew this. But this was, even before America was even known about, it was going on way back then. People that had uh, bondmen and bondwomen, people that they, they would enslave for periods of time. And it was a different kind of slavery uh, uh, during that time. It was slavery of conquest or, con or, 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 or nation. It wasn't so much racial slavery, but we won't get into all of that here. But the point is, a person being bond or free or owned that if you manipulate that person because you have authority or power over them, you've got to have a problem. Look what it says. Uh, 
you, you do this to a person that is betrothed to a husband, though because she's not free, she still has the right to be married, and not at all redeem. So you didn't redeem her, you didn't free her, you didn't do anything, you just abused her, nor freedom given her, all right? She shall be scourged, okay? Now, if she's doing it and y'all doing it together, she's going to have a, she's got to be uh, punished as well. But so will you. Look what it says here. And, and they shall not be put to death, but she shall, uh, because she was not free, right? So the, the sin for that normally would be death, according to the law of Moses. But they're not going to be put to death because she was looked at as you saw her as a people as a piece of property. You didn't even see her as a person. So, so because you saw her that way, she's not going to be put to death. All right. Even though you had the 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 authority and the power over her. Look at verse twenty one. He shall bring a trespass offering unto the Lord. You need to admit you've done wrong and bring an offering. Okay. But now, a lot of people are not going to do that. They're not going to admit they've done wrong. But when you do that, you admit you've done wrong, bring an offering. That's what we should do anyway. The, the, the scripture tells us that uh, um, the, the, uh, the word of God does not, uh, the spirit of God does not want us to sin. But if any man does sin, he has a what? An advocate with the Father. So we come to the Father when we do wrong and we bring it to the Lord. All right? And so uh, you bring an offering unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram for your trespass offering, because you've done wrong. Look at verse 22. And the priest shall make an atonement. Look at that. Who's our high priest? Jesus. And what does he do? He makes atonement. For what? For your sin. When you do what? Acknowledge it. If you acknowledge your sin, he will make atonement. All right, and he will make atonement for him with the with the ram and the trespass offering before the Lord, and for his sin which he hath done, and the sin which he hath done shall be forgiven him. Wow, I just see Jesus all in this. You go in there, you do a mess, and this is just one type of mess. You know, somebody of authority going in and taking advantage of somebody of less of authority, and they mingle together. You know, when they're not supposed to be. Right? Because this is what we're talking about in this particular portion, mingling stuff that ain't supposed to be mingled together. The only only uh, uh, mingling that's supposed to happen sexually is between a husband and a what? And a wife. And that's that's not uh, 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 being wrong because that's they are both of what? One accord. They are what? One flesh. But anybody else that you were with, you're mingling. It's like putting cows and donkeys and mingling uh, 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 seed, different kinds of seed and putting wool and linen. It's not supposed to go together because they're not one. They're not the same. If you want to be the same, you have to do what? Man has to marry the woman. Then they become what? They become the same. They become one. That's what Scripture teaches. Other than that, it's a sin. And then you're going to have to bring what? Forgiveness. You go to God. Lord, I done wrong. All right? And so that's important to keep in mind. Verse 23. And when ye shall come into the land. Now, he's talk, talking to these children of Israel about what's going to happen when you get to where you're going. You're on a journey. You're going somewhere. And us as uh, uh, individuals, we are not going to be here where we are now. We are going somewhere. We're going to have another day tomorrow and another week next week. If the Lord say the same, the Lord give us the opportunity to experience some other things. When you get to where the Lord is trying to bring you, keep some things in mind. What kind of things? Let's take a look. And when you come to the land, uh, and ye shall have uh, planted all manners of trees and fruits, ye shall count the fruit thereof as circumcised three years. In other words, honor what it, what it is that the Lord has brought you to for a three-year period. So what this means is don't go in there harvesting everything right off the bat. Get into the land, see how good it is, don't try to live off the land right off the bat. Still trust God. And man, that's hard to do sometimes. People, when they get things, a lot of times they just forget God. You give people a bunch of money. Give them a fat bank account. How much are they going to pray and ask God for guidance? Why do I got to ask God for guidance? I'm just going to go spend the money. 
you still need to ask God. Now, when you don't got a dime, you ask God to show show you what to do, how to do, when to do. Why? Because you, you, you ain't got but two cents, and you're trying to find out, well, which one should I spend it on? What should I do? But when you got a whole lot, you just like, I'm just going to do. No, when you get to that place where God has blessed you, still acknowledge him. Still bring things before him. And so he says you do this. We look at 24. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy. See, now it's holy. Now the Lord is saying, now you've trusted me these three years. Now you can go. Do your thing. Do you. Because in the midst of blessing, you still sought me. It's important to keep in mind. All right? Shall be holy to praise thereof. All right, 25. And in the fifth year, ye shall eat the fruit thereof. Now you're going to get blessed by it because you planted good stuff in the fourth year, and now you're getting the fruit in the fifth year. All right? Um, uh, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. Why are you getting increase? Because the Lord's given to you. I'll get an increase because I got a good land or I got a good job. I'm getting increased because I worked hard. I did. You're getting increased because the Lord is your God. That's why you're getting it. Right? Keep that in mind. 26. Ye shall not eat anything with blood. We talked about that in previous chapters. All right? So you, you make sure that you don't, uh, you don't break that law. Uh, you keep, because the Bible says that the life of the body is in the blood. All right? And there's so much that we can say about that, which we talked about already. But let's move forward. Neither shall ye uh, use enchant enchantments or observe time. So, now, here we go. Now we're going to get spiritual. I'm going to start getting scientific and spiritual. I'm going to see how the earth works and see how it all spins. And I'm going to make predictions and, and things based on that. When I should bring all my requests to God. I'm trying to act like I know what's going to happen. Just because we know that that the days of the week, I know that, it, this, that that Monday comes after Sunday and Tuesday after Monday, and you think, well, you know a whole lot now. I know this 365 days in a year, and we got the leap year. Oh, you know so much, so you know how the planets work. Suppose God shakes the planetary systems up and then things change. You still have to trust God, even when you think you have a clear order as to how things are. All right? But people are going to say, well, I know what to do now. I can trust in the days of the week and the signs in the sky, and I don't need to trust in God. That's what all this is about. You're going to mingle your work with the Lord, with, with the things that God has made. God made the heavens and the earth. Don't worship what he made. Worship him. And that's an important aspect. 27. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. In other words, you know, don't be trying to put any kind of... Uh, 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 symbolic uh, uh, ritual cuttings and things in your in your hair or in your head. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. All right, and, and so when, like what Mary was talking about, all these different groups that have all these different signature uh, uh, style things that they do. Don't do that, saying that well, I'm godly or I'm righteous because of what I do. Because of this symbol I have, that's, that's the, the evidence that I'm righteous or godly. That's not it. Your evidence is the fact that you have the righteousness of Jesus. If you don't have Jesus' righteousness covering your sins, you're still a sinner. 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings into thy flesh for the dead. All right? Trying to do spiritual things for people that are dead. And when we, the thing that we to do, are to do is what? We pray. We pray for uh, uh, those that are uh, 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 our loved ones and family members and those that are sick. That's where we go. And, some, and it says, nor make any markings upon you. Why? Because I'm the Lord. Not these actions that people do. Spiritual incantations. Right? All right, so uh, you, 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 know, you don't want to do that. You know, so we're talking about all these different things that people do trying to be so-called spiritual and deep when they just need to trust God. All right, but now we're going to get a little bit more practical in people's sin because sometimes people just want, you know, that, remember that old song by the, the OJs, 
Money, 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 money. Remember that though? Well, this is what we're going to look at in 29. Look what it says. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall into whoredom and the, and the land become full of wickedness. Now, you look at this and you go, wow, that's pretty awful. Well, everybody that's prostituting somebody, she's somebody's daughter. She belongs to somebody. She's got a parent somewhere. So if you prostitute any child, any, any woman, that's somebody's daughter. But the, 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 the horrible thing here is that there were some men, some fathers, that would prostitute their daughters. Now you go all the way back to the beginning of this chapter where it said, honor thy, thy, you know, thy, thy mother and thy father. This is why this becomes difficult in our society because some fathers look at children as they belong to me and I want to profit from them. They see them as property. Some parents see their children like masters would see the slaves. It's somebody for me to, 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 to kind of profit from. And that's wrong. And so the Lord points that out here. There are a lot of people that see things like that. They just think that everything's about them. Everything has to profit them. And that's a wrong thing. 30. Ye shall keep my Sabbath. We talked about that, right? And here we go seeing it again. I say underline that because that's an important. Why do we underline the Sabbath? Because that's our rest in what? In Jesus. I don't have to work for salvation. It's already been, been produced. I just have to accept it and believe it. Uh, and reverence my, my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Regard not the familiar spirit. Now here we go back to spiritual people trying to be spiritual but not trying to know God. Neither seek after a wizard. All right? Somebody that's trying to... Because if you're going to be spiritual and you're not seeking God, you're seeking spiritual evil. That means you're bringing up demons and devils. And that's not something that you want to deal with because they don't love you and they don't care about you. And they're only going to use you. If you go and try to incantation some kind of spiritual uh, 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 being and it's not God, then you are going to be used and manipulated regardless as to how you may think it's going to work for you. All right, verse 32. Uh, thou shalt raise up before uh, the hoary head and honor the face of the old man. In other words, you see somebody that's, that's you know, kind of balding and you know, you, or somebody with gray hair, the old man, honor their years and, and their wisdom. In other words, listen to them and hear what they're saying. Now, you say, well, I know some old people that they, they, they're crazy. Well, that's important to, to know too. But what God is saying is don't just discard knowledge, experience. People's experience, some people got experience and can tell you, I can tell you, don't do what I did. That's important too. As well as people that can say, this is what I did and this is how I made my success. Both of those are experiences and both of them are valued. The guy that lived and messed up can give you and say, listen, I've been there. I did it. It don't work. Don't go that way. All right? So that's an experience too. So whether the person may be of, of old of, and have great success or had great problems, they still have experience and they have wisdom. And so what God is saying, don't ignore it. If a stranger sojourn with thee in thy land, ye shall not vex him. Don't vex a person because he's different. There's a lot of people that come in, they're strangers, they don't have the same culture, the same ways that you have. Don't look at their ways and their cultures and go, well, you don't do it the way I do. Look, look, at, how you, look at how you eating your spaghetti. You slurping it. We cut our spaghetti. What kind of, how was you raised? You know, we, we can go through all those different things. And I just use that as one. This hundreds and thousands of ways that people do things that are the way they do it. But if it's not a problem and it's not wrong and it's not a sin, acknowledge, oh wow, that's an interesting way of doing it. I never would have thought to put pepper on that. I always put this on it. You know, you just find, and what does that do? It grows you. Once again, that's why it's connected to the old man, that, that person that's a stranger, can bring 
ideas and, and wisdom that you may not have thought about because it comes from a different place. So don't vex them. All right, 34. But the stranger that dwells with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. There you go again. You're loving him. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And what he's now reminding you, remember when you were a stranger. How do you want to feel when you become that individual that's kind of outcast and you're in a culture that's totally different than yours? All right? So think about that. All right, finishing up here, 35. Ye shall do, you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment and, and, and uh, uh, meter yards in weights or in measures. So do correct math. Do correct measure. If you, if you say, I'm going to give you, uh, you know, 10 ounces, don't give them eight. If you say, I'm going to give you a yard, don't give them two feet, 10 inches. Give them the full yard. So in other words, you know, your measurements and the things that you're supposed to do, do it correctly. I'm going to come and I'm going to meet you at 5 o'clock. Don't show up at 8. All right? Do it right. Measure it properly. And, man, we could, we could spend a long time on this, but I'm trying to move along. But you get the point, right? So look at 36. It says, just balances, just weights and just ephods, and a just hen, even uh, ye have, I am the Lord. In other words, make your, your, your measurements and the things that you equate proper. Don't just do it any kind of way to you what? To your advantage. That's the, that's the whole focus of this, is that I'm trying to manipulate and to trying to basically, going back to that other verse, I'm really doing what? Stealing from you. I'm not giving you your full wage. I'm not giving you your full due. I'm taking it. All right? I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. 37, therefore ye shall observe all my statutes and all my judgments. To do them, I am the Lord. All right? That means do everything in this book. Everything. Don't forget anything. Be perfect. Well, if I had to do that, I'm going to be messed up. I'm going to need some, I'm going to need some help. And thank God for Jesus. Because Jesus says, well, I did it. I did everything in it. I did all his judgments. And I did uh, all his statutes. Jesus did it. And he said, now that I've done it, I have it in surplus. I can give what I got to you. See how Jesus gives what he has to us? He tells us whatever we're gifted at, we should give to other people. But Jesus says, I'm gifted in righteousness and in holiness because I can fulfill all the laws of the, that were given to Moses. I am abundant in, in the righteous statutes and abundant in the righteous judgments. I have it for you if you want to receive it. Therefore, now you can fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because you will have righteousness and holiness just like uh, the Father has, just like the Son has, just like the Holy Spirit has. But you got to want it, and you have to accept it. And then you got to believe it by faith. And don't try to add anything else to it. Just take it the way it is. All right, we're going to stop there. Any other comments or questions?